In this video, we're going to take some scraps of some of the finest organ black walnut in all the world from Golby Walnut and turn it into this, a luxurious wine caddy. To start the wine caddy, I got a bottle of grape juice and a piece of walnut that is tall enough and wide enough to get my two sides out of. Next, using very scientific methods, I placed my grape juice bottle for my wine caddy on top of my side to figure out how wide it needs to be. I'll simply just mark that line there, and that's how wide I'll cut each end piece of the wine caddy. Now I've got my two sides for my wine carrier, but honestly, this square shape, it just isn't doing it for me. I think it'd be cool if the shape of this side more reflected the shape of a wine bottle. So I put my grape juice bottle on my board and I'm just gonna loosely follow it on the edge to get a contour that I like. Now I'll just follow my line with a jigsaw. This next part's where a spindle sander would come in really handy, but since I don't have one, I'm just gonna take my time with a belt sander I have. I'll just refine the shape that I cut out with my jigsaw and slowly sneak up on that line to make the perfect curve. Next, I can take the piece that I'd like and use it as a jig for the piece that I haven't cut yet. I'll simply place them together, trace around it with a pencil, and take the bulk of this material out with the jigsaw. And here's what we're left with, our original piece and then our second piece with just a little bit of wood left. Next, I put a little blue tape on each piece. I'll add a little bit of super glue to one, a little activator to the other, and I'll temporarily secure these two pieces together. And I'll use a flush trim bit on my router to make sure that these two pieces end up exactly the same. Now I have two sides that are halfway done. This side and this side. I'll take my pencil and draw around each edge on both sides, take out the majority with a jigsaw like we did before, tape and glue these together, then use my flush trim router bit to go ahead and get both of these exactly the same, having the shape that I want. Now you do want to be careful when you're gluing these together that you have one clean edge on each side. Here I have my overhang and when I flip this over, I'll have my overhang on this side. So I've got one clean edge to run my router against. If I were to flip these and have both of my clean edges on the same side, and both my dirty edges on the other side, that wouldn't give me the results that I want. And there you have it, two sides of the wine caddy. Now I'll rip a scrap piece of walnut down to width that will be the base for our caddy. This will be easy for me because when I ripped my side pieces down to width, I didn't move my table saw fence. Now using my miter saw, I'll cut this into a square. Since I already know the width of this is the same as my side piece, there's no reason to do measurements. I'll just line up my side piece and that should give me a perfect square if I cut on that line. Next, I'll go around the outside edge of each one of my end pieces with my trusty 1 8 inch roundover bit. Next, I have these little slat pieces that need to go on each side of the caddy to make sure that our wine doesn't fall out. There'll be two for each side. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know the last thing I wanna be doing is measuring. I'll just line up my pieces on the edge of my work and mark where I'd wanna cut them. That looks pretty good, I'll cut three more. And I decided to give that same 1 8 inch roundover treatment to the outside edge of each one of my slat pieces. Next, I'll drill a 7 16 inch hole through the top part of each of my side pieces for our handle system. To do this, I'll just use the oldest, rickety, most unreliable drill press that I could find. And there's our hole. Oh, but I find that drinking a whole bottle of wine straight from the bottle is sort of frowned upon. So I want to find a way to add some glasses to this. And I'll make some little thing that mounts to each side of this carrier that will be able to hold a wine glass. To start out, I'll just want to round the edge of this and I'll just use a wine glass uh, as a template. I'll rough cut this out with my jigsaw and refine the edges a little bit with my belt sander. And I'll use this as a template, cut off the extra with my jigsaw, tape them together and use my flush trim bit on my router to make two identical pieces. I have my two wine glass holders still glued together after using the router and now I need to drill a three quarter inch hole. So I've marked a place where I want my three quarter inch hole to go. This hole will be part of the slot that will hold our wine glass in place. Next we'll just need to take a little slice out of this so that we can slide our wine glass in there. And of course these get the same 1 8 inch roundover treatment on all the edges as well. The idea is that 
We'll be able to put our wine glass in there like that and it'll hold it in place. I have everything sanded down. Now we can start assembly. The first thing I want to do is attach the wine glass holder. So I'm just going to lay this out and figure out where I want it to lay on my piece. So I'll just put some marks where I want this, carry those across to both sides so they're even on both sides. And then we'll get a little glue on this and screw them in place. Next, I'll add a little bit of glue, spread it with my trusty finger, line this piece up with my line. Make sure it's square. And then using a little clamp, I'll clamp it in place. Now I'm not convinced that glue is gonna be a strong enough connection here. So I'm actually gonna put some screws from the inside. To do that, I'll just countersink a couple of holes and I'll secure it in place with a couple of one and a quarter inch screws. And that won't be going anywhere. Now I'll go ahead and plug these holes with some oak dowels that I have. Put some glue in the hole, add a dowel. We'll let those dry for a few minutes and then we'll cut them flush and sand them nice and smooth. And I really think that gives it a nice contrast and a nice finished look and it's plenty sturdy. Next, I'll attach the base the same way. We have our bottom attached and you can see these white oak dowels really give this a nice finished look. Now, I know some of you are wondering why did I use white oak dowels? And it really comes down to the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of this video is me. Ben Van Kirk. I buy all my own tools and I bought all my own supplies for this video. I had white oak dowels laying around, so that's what I use. If you don't like it, tell me down below how you would have attached this base. The next thing we need to do is attach these little slats. These slats will go on the side to ensure that our valuable cargo doesn't spill out onto the floor and break into a million pieces. I was really torn on the design of this thing. I wanted these little slats to be really thin. Because these are so thin, I can't countersink a screw and fill it with an oak dowel. I'm going to glue them in place and fasten them down with a few 16 gauge finish nails. I attached my first piece with a little bit of glue and nails. Now I need to attach my second piece. To get the spacing I want, I just found a scrap piece of wood that I like the dimensions of. Put a little glue, it won't take much. Line it up in place and just secure it with a few nails. And that's what the side will look like. And would we be doing this Oregon Black Walnut any justice if we just finished it with anything but a nice coat of Rubio Monaco? I don't think so. If we're going over the top, let's go all the way. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but Ben, we've gone this whole video and we forgot to put a handle on this thing. How am I going to carry this thing around? There's a reason why we drilled a seven and one sixteenth inch hole in each top. That's because I'm going to use this three eighths inch twine rope as a handle. I've already cut a piece to length and tied a knot in one end. Next, I'll feed it through my holes. I'll leave a little bit of slack in here for a handle and I'll tie the other side off with another knot and I'll cut off the excess. And there it is, the rope handle. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think that I went cheapo with it? Let me know in the comments down below. And by the way, if you like this build, then watch this next video that's showing up on your screen right now because YouTube thinks that you'll like it too. Thanks for watching.